This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. All right, it's time for this week's Wrestling Perspective Podcast. We're doing another live Q&A, so if you're not able to join, keep out, keep an eye out for them. Myself, Dennis Farrell, and the one and only Canadian Destroyer, Petey Williams. How's she going, eh? Petey Williams. What's going on, buddy? Um, you know, feeling a little parched, I think. I think we need some. What, what, what's missing from last week? We had the, 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 the drinks. Yes. Hey, where's your butler? Are you gonna? You, <laughs> it's funny you should ask because uh, I brought my butler with me this week. I heard about yeah, that. Yeah. The, no, well, well, we'll just we'll just bring him in, and you know, we'll get some drinks and stuff like that. Drinks, and, uh, please. Yep. Three. Did somebody order some drinks? <laughs> <laughs> it's television's Chris Saban is your butler. No. <laughs> Thank you, Chris Saban. I, I think everybody knows that uh, Chris, Chris Saban's, Saban's not my butler. Not your butler. Um, but, yeah. you know, I mean, that's a good segue. I mean. He nailed it. <laughs> he did. Wow. <laughs> you should be on TV. So, <laughs> hey, ho- hop in. All right. Look at this, the chat room. Oh, my gosh. They're going nuts. Yes, Chris Saban is here with us today. This is my first time meeting Chris Saban. Hey, I'm Petey Williams. <laughs> it's nice to Hi, meet you. Chris. Chris, Chris okay. Pleasure to meet you. <laughs> I've never seen you before. <laughs> for the first time, it's nice to meet you. Thank you so much for hanging out. This has been kind of cool because... Surprise! I right? know, right? <laughs> as nerdy and fanboyish as this sounds, I'm always after Petey. Like, hey, you know, I know Chris is kind of rehab and not doing anything. Invite him over. Come hang out. And Petey's like, I don't know if this is even his thing. And here you are. Here I am. So... Um, Saban, we know. Okay, I'll just I'll just back it up a bit. When I wasn't with Impact Wrestling, I I, I watched you on TV. I, I don't remember what year your first uh, knee injury was, but uh, I remember watching and you know you tore your ACL and then you had your rehab and it was like a year later than you come back within a month. Like no, I don't even know if it was a month. It might have been less than that. You, you I, I see you catch a dive or whatever the case may be, and you tear your other ACL and I'm like man what (laughs) like if this guy has like no luck whatsoever and then you come back uh you rehab it you become you know impact world champion I was there for that I was awesome that I got to see that and then again now um uh, you're out with an ACL injury so you know talk about your injury what's what's going on with that when can we expect your return all that sort of stuff well, uh, it's funny you say you don't remember what year it was because I remember exactly what of year it was and month did. and the day. Um, yeah, it was in 2011 when the first one happened. It was my right knee. <clears throat> I remember it happened on April 20th, 420. Um, Get out of here. No, really? I'm serious. Yeah, it happened 20. on 420 that year. I had surgery on Friday, who were, who were Friday the 13th. Anarchia. You remember Anarchia from LAX? He was a short-lived LAX filling guy. Um, I, I don't. absolutely terrible in the ring. Just, just, just the worst. <laughs> if he's listening right um, now, I mean, okay. But it sorry, man. Matter. Sorry. I don't yeah. even know if he still works. But no, well, he he's doesn't. actually your real butler, believe it or not. He is my real <laughs> butler. You know, so very well deserved uh, his position. Yeah, yeah. that's so, that's all he could do was uh, was be a butler after he was so bad at wrestling he had to leave. So anyway, yeah. So that happened. Um, yeah, I had I had surgery on, on Friday the thirteenth also, which was. I don't know, maybe that was kind of ominous. Maybe that's where the bad luck came from. Friday the 13th? 420 Friday the 13th. This is ridiculous. Okay. Yeah, yeah, weird dates. So, yeah, so, you know, I went through the rehab, finally came back. Uh, It was my 11th match back when I returned. Uh, I tore my left ACL. And what happened was, I remember it was Ultimate X match against myself, uh, Austin Aries, and DJ Z. But I think it was Zima Ion at the time. Yeah, yeah. And I took a backdrop to the floor, and I remember just my left knee exploded. I think I was just favoring my right knee so much. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if I wasn't ready. I didn't rehab it well enough, whatever the case may be. So, yeah, then it happened then. So, But, you know, after I came back from that, I was fine for, you know, that was 2012. And so I, was, I was good for seven years. And then it just happened again, uh, you know, second week in January. How did it happen this time? So, uh you know, I was really curious to see it, but they, they ended up cutting it out of the TV show. It was on that match that happened and aired on ROH TV last week, but they cut it out for some reason. I'm not sure why, but I was giving hmm. Flip Gordon a just so, it's something simple, you know, a top rope Frankensteiner with him sitting on the top rope. As I flipped over, I tried to land on my feet, and uh, I just planted wrong, I guess, and my knee just buckled inward, and I felt the pop, you know, and I knew right away that it was my ACL because it's happened twice before, so... Um, you know, I think I did one more thing in the match where 
Uh, I threw a clothesline at Rhett Titus, and he ducked it, and then I just got out of there. Uh, I, I wasn't supposed to do much more in the match, but, I, you know, I just rolled out because I couldn't walk. And, uh, yeah, I knew I knew it was it right away, and, yeah, here I am getting surgery uh, in April. Just been doing physical therapy in the meantime, and, you know, that's about it. Hanging out in my house. Hanging out here. Getting yeah, you guys where, beers. Where else would you want to be? So what's your, uh, you know. <laughs> anywhere so, else but here. <laughs> I'm sure everybody's wondering. So what's your, right now it's, uh, what, March 1st? Um, what's your expected return? March 1st, 2019. What, what, what are you thinking if rehab goes well? Um, I would guess 2020. Uh, they say it takes a little longer to rehab because this will be my, a revision surgery. This will be my second surgery. And, uh, it's a little more complicated because there's already hardware in my knee. So, um, you know, they're gonna have to go in there and deal with that. So, uh, they say it takes a little longer to rehab. So I'm guessing I'll be back 2020. Okay. I just gotta say, Turning Hill had the best comment so far in the chat room. Okay, yeah. you know you're good. You know you're good when Frankensteiner is just something simple. <laughs> yeah, something simple like a Frankenstein, like like a hurricane rana. Yeah, like no problem. I couldn't so, do one. Well, uh, I mean, yeah. of course I'm fat and out of weight, and well, not I out guess of it's dude, all I remember we talked about this last podcast. Don't let me bring it up again. I saw you try to get to the second row. <laughs> like you know, he's like, hey, hey, I won't. Like uh, over in Toronto at Slamversary, he's like, "Hey, can you uh, take a picture of me? I want to pose on the second rope with the belt, my, my and, fancy and football fancy champion football belt." Yeah, and I'm I like, don't sure. do anything real. And he goes and he tries to go up there with the belt, like you know, Stone Cold, I'm or winded. something like that. And he's trying. He's like, "I can't, I can't do it, Petey. I can't do it. Can you like pass the belt up to me after I get up here?" And I'm like, well, I'm, not so, <laughs> "I'm not sure-footed." See, so a lot of people like watching this or listening to this at home, like you think it, it we make it look so easy. You, you just you just walk up to the second rope, but it's really wiggly. not that easy it's wiggly and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're like oh my god like i can't uh, any questions on the uh well, yeah guys feel free to shoot questions to us uh chris sabin is here in the basement with us you know pd we should get like something where people sign like a brick or something like oh you know what they have i know what you're saying yeah corgan hall remember that so funny we got some posters up here right now this was at uh this was actually at Cork and Hall. Do you remember Wrestling Project? And what year was this? Like 2000? 2004, I think it was. Was it four? No, 2005. 2005, 2005, 2005 right? right? So you could see, and you probably can't see it at home. I don't know if they have the Zoom camera. It says 2005 right there. Where? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. May 2nd, yeah. 2005. So Chris Saban's Monday, over there. by the way. Look at that. Awesome dyed, what, red hair. Awesome pose. Ted Hart. Look at that. Before he was Teddy, he was Ted. <laughs> we Teddy bury Hart. him all the time on the podcast. You got Jack Evans, who's, I don't know if you've seen Jack Evans recently, but I just saw him in yeah. Mexico, yeah. I believe, last time I was there, and he looks, like, identical to Matthew McConaughey. Um, all right, all right. Uh, myself, Joey Legend, who gave us, uh, you know, a lot of uh, um, he's the one. Memories. He's the one who hooked me up yeah, with this tour. Yeah. I, I, all wouldn't, of us. I wouldn't have been on this tour if it yeah. wasn't for Joey Legend. And do you remember Terry Funk being there? I don't know. No, Terry Funk yeah, was not know, there. I don't even think he showed up. Um well, it looks but, like they advertised him, and he, you know that's probably why Wrestling Project closed down shortly afterwards. Yeah, thanks, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know where I was going with this. But I was talking about uh, what, what were we even talking signing about? signing something, Corrigan Hall. Oh yeah, so Corrigan Hall. Okay, so do you remember what happens at Corrigan Hall? You sign the the wall there. Yep. Right. So yeah. I mean, I think so at Corrigan Hall. There's a little, uh, you know, there's upstairs, downstairs. There's multiple floors, but there's this one. You, stairwell where everybody signs the wall. It's like the landing of the stairwell. That's kind of cool. And everybody signs the wall on there. And they've painted over it since. So, I mean, our, our autographs probably still aren't, aren't even on there anymore. They're not there. Um, they're not? You saw it? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. They're not there. But anyway, we should get something like that. Like, this would be the perfect spot right here where we get, you know, some autographs. Going as on. as sad as it is, it's only going to be signed a hundred times by PD and Chris Sabin. <laughs> you two are the only guys that will come. You never know. This could be a new, like, do you think? Yeah, well, I mean, who would have known? Like, okay, it happened at Corgan Hall. Then where's the thing? Where's the place that we go in Japan? Ribera Steakhouse. And mm-hmm. everybody gets the Ribera jacket and takes a picture. But why Ribera? I mean, honestly, I don't think Ribera is that good. Like, the food itself. Like, I would much rather go to, like, uh-oh, um, uh-oh, Korean barbecue. I mean, do you agree with me? I mean, I think, no, I, I think their I like steak Ribera's is better. I, mean, I think it's pretty good. It's, it's, it's okay, <clears throat> I would say. Like, you know, and like Ribera's. For us common folks, Chris, I mean, this is Petey who has a mansion sure. and a butler. When people. Yeah, not I mean, you. I mean, <laughs> yes. I, the I filet mignon. Uh, <laughs> so, like, no, the, but the thing is, like, when I first went there, I'm like, everybody's going to this Ribera steakhouse. It must be awesome, awesome. And I was like, I guess my expectations were so high. It's not that I was disappointed. I was like, I was expecting like, like 
um, I don't know, Korean barbecue, like 8.0 or something like that. Sure. Well, you got to admit, I mean, it's, it's better than like Outback Steakhouse or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Better steak you're going to get at Applebee's. I think it was just like way too built up for me and stuff like that. And but I think it's more of being there, like seeing all the wrestlers, pictures on the wall, like uh-huh. Hulk Hogan from like 1980s back in the day and just – and I, I think our picture's up there. Our picture is still yeah. up there, yeah. And still. I think you have that hairdo, I have that hairdo, and we're yeah. like, eh, you know, with the and all that kind of stuff. But um, good times. Well, Birdman wants to know, PD and Chris, uh, what's your perfect retirement match, and who would you want to face? I'll go first since I already had my retirement match and I faced him. <laughs> that didn't <laughs> so, last long. Yeah, I know, right? So. He's probably like super up. Like, so it was an honor to me. Like I was really dead set. Like, this is it for me. Like this, is this is my last match. I want it like, and I remember, um, DBA, uh, XICW, um, you know, he was like, who do you want to face? And I know he was making his big return. You know, he just quit impact and, uh, he would, he was like, his, almost like your first match back on the Indies. Right. Yeah, Almost pretty I, I, much. I'm not sure if it was my first. I can't remember. But it was, it was like it was that, it was that time. It was, it was shortly after I left. Right. And I'm like, oh, you know, he probably has big plans for Saban or whatever. And I said, you know, I would love to wrestle Saban, but you know, Gutter was my first match. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Gutter would be be cool if I got to like kind of close the circle. And he's like, I'll give you Saban, man. I'm like, R- R- really? You know. And we did it. And I was retired for three years. And you know, you could thank our mentor Scott Demore. For egging me on for months and months to come back until I finally, you know, gave in. Um, but you know, still to this very day, you know, if I if I do it again, and I'm not gonna have a retirement match at, you know, I honestly haven't wrestled since October. Right. So I mean, I, I'm never gonna have another retirement match. So I'm you're just, just kind of fade away. I'm just gonna fade away, right? Because I already had my retirement match with Saban. If I ever have to do a retirement match again, I would also pick Saban. Um, just because, you know, of the history and stuff like that. And I've already did it once. I thought it was a, a good, complete circle. Um, that would be me. Gotcha. You. Well, I, mine was kind of similar to that. Like, I, I don't really want to have a retirement match. I don't want to have, like, any sort of ceremony or anything. Honestly, I just want to kind of just inexplicably disappear and just, hey, I had a match, and then I just disappear like that, and then I, you know, go off. I, I you know, I don't want to burn out, or you know, or like fade slowly, fade away. Like, all right, the Chris Saban, uh, you know, retirement tour. I'm going to do three more matches Balding for and these fat promotions, and, and barely uh, it's moving coming. around the yeah, ring. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to just up and just disappear one day, and you'll never hear from me again. And that's going to be it. That's the way to do it. Kind of like, you know, your, your your tag team partner from the Motor City Machine Guns, Alex Shelley. He kind of just disappeared right like well what, what he had a retirement last... speech you know oh, he did have bring... a speech yeah yeah there was a what, whole, what was the match there? everything uh it was me versus um scorpio sky i think or no me yeah me versus scorpio sky no no, no was I'm he sorry. in it no no what was he, his he match? wasn't a part of it oh his last match yeah uh, we wrestled a tag, some sort of tag match at ring of honor but it wasn't i, I can't remember what the actual uh tag match was I'm not sure what the last. So what was, was what was his but... speech there? Is you and Scorpio Sky, and then he made a speech in your match or something? Maybe it was me and Silent Man. I don't. Know. This wasn't that long ago, but anyway, it's okay. <laughs> so Chris, I do this all the time. Like Dennis will ask me, like, "Hey, have you ever met so and so?" And I'm like, "Dude, I don't know, but he's probably watching or listening right now." And I'm like, "You know, he's gonna." So, yeah, I mean, I, mean, you know, I, I don't write this stuff down. Yeah. You know? like, <laughs> me, I'm not sure. Neither. I can't remember exactly who I wrestled, but they did a storyline at Ring of Honor where. They knew that uh, Alex Shelley was retiring, and he came and he made a big speech, and he talked about retiring, and he, you know, it was part of a story, and he wanted me to go off and go for the TV title and all this stuff. So it was like it was like a thing, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't just him do, just up and disappearing. Do you think that? And that's the thing with like I I I felt I was never gonna come back. I was so content on 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 not coming back until Demore hit that line that it was like, oh, you know, I thought that you know your kids might want to see what their daddy used to do. And I'm like, you son of oh. So then um, do you feel that everybody says they're going to retire? Do you feel like Alex Shelley will come back? I think so. I mean, you know, <laughs> well, everybody well, well, question. Back, right? <laughs> retirements are retirements of pro wrestling. And if you haven't learned that at this point, you're not a pro wrestling yeah. fan. How many times have people retired do, and come back? Do, do you feel like people have the intention to retire? Like, Hey, I'm done. I'm done. And it kind of like, you, you've been in this business just as long as I actually probably like a year longer than I have. And do you feel like it just sucks you back in? Like it's hard to like, 
it's it's a part it of does, you. Does yeah, it becomes a part of you. It just like it just takes over your soul and your body. It, it and does. Every single cell in your body just becomes absorbed with the pro wrestling energy, and uh, you just miss it. You know what I mean? If you're away from it for long enough, especially if you do it for a long time and you do it at a high level, it's you know it just becomes a part of you and you miss it too much and you come back. I know exactly what you mean because I made the leap from doing radio with fantasy football to doing podcasting and wrestling and. I'm having much more fun doing this and talking wrestling than I ever did on ESPN radio because this is this is what we grew up doing and watching and it, it's in our blood. Mm-hmm. Me on the other side of the mic, by the way. Yeah. It just becomes a part of you. It does. Yeah. You know, I wanted to talk about this for a minute. Uh, you and I, we're kind of close to the same age. I'm 41. You're probably, what, 38, 39? No, he's 37. 37. So mm-hmm. we're around the same age. We grew up, and PD and I, we did this, and we talked about playing, you know, Nintendo 64, the old uh, NWO versus WCW, uh, WrestleMania 2000, No Mercy. And you kind of grew up playing those same games, too. And I've got to ask you, what are some of those games that you used to love playing growing up? I think my favorite two were uh, WCW vs. NWO World Tour and WCW vs. The World. Uh, those were two games that uh, me and my buddies, I just have tons of just great memories with my friends. Because, you know, 64 was like the first system it, to have yeah. four controller ports built into it. Yeah. So GoldenEye. Play, yeah, GoldenEye was awesome, of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, so, uh, I, you know, just, just because I have so many good memories of just playing that as kids, you know, having fun going over to my buddy's house and all of us playing. Who are, who are your wrestlers? Because... No, you create your own guys, and you love that. And it, we, like I said, on the No Mercy right now, I'm going through, and it has like 18 slots, and I'm slowly filling them in with current wrestlers, the best versions I can find on the internet. I'm not actually doing the legwork, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it's kind of cool because you know I'll have a Kenny Omega, and he's wrestling The Rock. It, so, who were the guys you enjoyed playing on those games? Uh, I liked. I, I think it was. WCW World Tour that had all the uh, so they copied a bunch of Japanese wrestlers. Japanese, there was yeah. like the Great Sasuke and Takamichi Noku and Naniwa, but they had like different names, even though they were exactly them. But mm-hmm. they were you know called them different things. I, I think I remember Naniwa was the claw, and he was always just you know it was fun to pick him because his taunt he would just do like the swivel hips, yes. and the crotch chop, or so you know. I, I, I like those guys <laughs> just because it was fun to pick, you know. I, I wish they'd bring back that game engine from T was it THQ yeah the the, the kind of blocky and they finally got it right towards the end and just faded away and disappeared but to me is as fun as the WWE 2Ks are nothing beats that blocky you know wrestling games easy oh. to button hit move block mm-hmm. perfect for me Sorry. what was that game do you remember we used to be in the hotel room back when Red was with with us Amazing Red. And he had that one Japanese game, and I remember I always picked Kawada. Yeah. Do you remember the name of that game uh, by chance? Because he used to always get so upset because yeah. I would do the Kawada kicks and the power bomb and then beat him. And he was like an expert. At, you remember that? Yeah, I definitely remember that. I don't remember what the name of the game was, oh, but it was man. it was a Japanese game. Yeah, and uh, he had the, uh, the little you know the converter thing you need for to be able yeah. to the. the American <sighs> version. It on yeah, TVs. It was, no, it wasn't the American version. But you know, if you have. Uh, what is that? Can some sort of converter chip that you need in your video game system, like a mod chip or okay. whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In order to play, because you know the, you can't play Japanese video games on an American system. You're you're still a gamer, right? Yeah. What what games do you run now? Well, lately I've been playing uh, PUBG with. Uh, actually, I play PUBG a lot with Chase Owens, uh, part of the Bullet Club, New Japan wrestler. Him and I play PUBG a lot. Um, What's pub, pub? Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. It's kind of like adult Fortnite. Okay. Uh, you know, there's blood and vehicles, and it, it's a little more realistic. But you know, is it on a, a a game engine or is it on like a phone? So Grandpa Petey, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry, Grandpa Guy, Petey. <laughs> hey, I I don't have time. <laughs> oh, here it is <laughs> to play these games. Seven streams I wish of income. I did. That's why I would we all love, work for him. I would love to just be able to. Say, man, I was a gamer. We just talked about like playing these games with Red and stuff like that. I yeah. was a gamer, but then you know, kids happen and life happens, stuff like that. Now I, I would love to get back into it, but. I want to be able to, like, you know, talk about this and be in this conversation with you guys instead of sitting here going, oh, what's Pudgy? I don't know. Well, now you know how I feel when you talk to your buddies and I'm like, dude, but you know wrestling, though. You know what I mean? Barely. Anyways, um, so, so go on. Is it on an actual uh, console or is it like a – It's on both. You can play it on mobile. There's a mobile version of PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds that you can play on your phone. But I don't like it because the controllers are – I don't know. I, I, I can't play it on the phone. I just, yeah, you need it's the controller. Too hard. Yeah, yeah, I need the controller. 
Um, so, you know, yeah, it's a fun game. It's basically, you know, like I said, adult Fortnite. Apex Legends is like a similar kind of game where you parachute on the island, Hunger Games style, and then, you know, it's first person, though. Right. But, you know, before that, I played, uh, you know, Red Dead Redemption 2 and mm-hmm. Far Cry 5, I think, were the last two games I played How was that. it? Because I had Red Dead 1, and it was a blast. Me and my buddies would get on and dork around, and we didn't do yeah. any missions, but we, you know ran uh, stagecoaches off cliffs and doing stupid stuff. That was number two. That's amazing. Yeah, it's probably, I might say it's definitely one of the best games I've ever played. I don't know, may, maybe the best game I've ever played. Just really? Very immersive. The story is great. Uh, it's just there's so much you can do within the game. Like, uh, you can even sit down at a table and play poker. You know, and I well, sometimes I would spend, like, five hours just playing <laughs> like poker. poker. You know, yeah, it's, it's, it's just an amazing game that's, you know, you can't even describe. You just have to play it to... To realize how good it is. In one of the chat rooms, I did have a question for you guys. Did you guys ever create yourselves in any of the video games when you were professional wrestlers? Not. I'll I'll start off. Not when I was a professional wrestler, because at that point I wasn't really playing playing video games. I think I was beyond. So, so, So what's weird is when I became a professional wrestler and started really working with Impact, I really didn't watch any wrestling like there, there's a there's an era in like wwe that i i didn't even watch like i don't even know what happened because i was like you know we've talked about this before i was so like immersed in like wrestling that when i went home i just didn't want to watch any more of it right or, or follow it in wwe or whatever the case may be but when i was younger yes definitely i'm like yeah man i'm gonna design myself all that kind of stuff but as an adult i i didn't yeah, yeah, same. I, I once I got into wrestling, I never made myself in a wrestling game. But before that, yes, absolutely. Did you did you have to fight the urge off? Because come on, if I was a professional wrestler and there was Nintendo sixty four game every day, I would be like, uh, you know what? I'm gonna do the Death Valley Driver and the Super <laughs> no, Kick. No, so like <laughs> four fifty splash. I think so, guys. So before I was a pro wrestler, I would buy the wrestling games. Hence the right. you know the ones we just talked about, the THQ games, right? And the only wrestling game that I actually I didn't even buy. I received it. It was on PSP. Remember the handheld PSP? Yes. I was doing like an autograph signing in St. Louis. There was like a in the mall at St. Louis. There was a wrestling store. And uh, they gave me uh, one of those SmackDown vs. Raw PSP games, right? And so that's that's the last one that I had. And I don't remember what year it was, like 2008 or something like that. Mm-hmm. That was the last one I had. So to fight the urge, n- no, because, I mean, you, you kind of – it was kind of weird, like, playing that wrestling game with you, like, a, a few weeks ago. Oh, like, going so back fun. to, like, WrestleMania 2000 and No Mercy and stuff. I haven't played that in years. And just to see that, I'm like, man, I, I – <laughs> This is great, but I haven't played that since I've been a professional wrestler. I'm gonna have to book Chris to come play video games with me. Yeah, is that how that? Do I have to call if your you agent know, or how's that work? Probably yeah, to, his butler. As, oh. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I was gonna say as long as PD gives me the time off. <laughs> how how is the benefits working for PD? You know, it's cool. You know, I mean, he pays me well, uh, treats me well. You know, it's I, I enjoy butler work. What can I say? <laughs> right, it's a hobby more than anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, Jeffrey from uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air is one of my heroes growing up. So see, I'm more yeah. of a Benson guy, but yeah, okay, I understand. I, I like Mr. Belvedere. I wish both of you. Oh. Would act like that but oh, anyways nice. cool. <laughs> Pete coming out big I, I like that uh we we are getting a ton of questions here in the chat room let's see uh can you guys tell any funny aj style stories um i mean where do you want to go with that clean for the radio okay clean for the radio <laughs> um i mean the first thing i pops in my head just because we're talking about video games um and i might have told this on the podcast before and I think you were there, actually. Okay. Um, we were playing some sort of, like, NBA-type game. And uh, we were playing it, uh, GameCube. AJ brought in GameCube. I had, like, PS2 at home. And I remember I had the game for PS2. I was pretty good at it. I didn't let AJ know that I was good at the game. <laughs> All right? And you know how competitive AJ is. Yeah, yeah. Game. Of so course. competitive. Yeah. So I remember him. I'm playing him. And I'm like, how do these buttons work? You know, but I, I don't know because I don't have GameCube, so I just want to know how the buttons work. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm and I'm beating him, and he's like banging on the table, hoping that the, the disc, skip. yeah, would skip so he wouldn't lose. Oh wow! Right, so that that, that that's aging how serious he is about the games. I mean, that's that's one of the. You know, gaming ones I have for AJ. Do you have anything for AJ? Uh, I, th- I think him and uh, Alex Shelley and I played Mario Kart one time. And, uh, you know, he just wasn't winning. 
<laughs> Both Alex and I were way better than him at Mario Kart, and uh, he was just getting so pissed. Yeah. yeah, him just losing at video games are probably the funniest stories I yeah. have. And even if I wasn't playing with him, just watching him play someone else, if he lost, or if, if he lost, he would oh my god, yeah, oh, yeah, he was like that was. Pissed, I mean, yeah. we probably shouldn't be saying this because. Uh, but I mean, he like what? losing at video games because yeah, oh, that's gonna derail his career right now. No, I don't know because you know I know like like Xavier Woods, you know, is a big into video games, has his own video game channel, all that kind of stuff. I wonder if they play each other and if they have like major heat with each other backstage because of the video. And I wonder who's better. I'm you sure know, you I, can I text like, somebody. Well, yeah, I, I, I we probably should text them. Who's better at video games, AJ Styles or Xavier Woods? Mm. Or maybe that should be like one of our survey questions. Or I like, like that. that. I like that. Uh, another question, uh, Chris. While you're injured, do you keep an eye on the landscape of wrestling? Oh yeah, of course, of course. I uh, I, I try to keep track on everything. Um, it's kind of hard sometimes. When I the first couple of weeks that I was injured, I didn't watch any wrestling at all because it was kind of sore. I was like, shit. And because in my mind, I knew that like, wow, I'm not going to be able to wrestle for like a year or so, maybe le- you know, hopefully less. Uh, so it was kind of hard to watch wrestling, but I'm slowly getting back into it. What was the yeah. first thing you watched? Because I, I understand it's the same thing is, and it's unfair to compare this to like fantasy football, but you lose in the fantasy football championships and you don't want to watch any more football, but yet here comes the playoffs. And I, you know, for many years, if I lost a championship game, I don't want to watch football for a couple of weeks. And it's the best part of football at that point. So at what point then do you go? All right, I can watch wrestling again. What was the first thing you watched? Uh, well, I saw that they uh, released WWF superstars on the network, and I was oh. like, "Wow, you know, it's uh, you know, I wanted to watch for nostalgic reasons, you know, to kind of like, you know, oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna watch the yeah. wrestling that 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 got me that made me fall in love with wrestling, you know, and that's obviously like '90s WWF. So I decided that I was gonna go back and I was gonna watch. All that in order. I'm just going to watch all of 90s WWF. So I started off with Superstars in 1992 because it just gives me memories of, uh, you know, being a kid, 10 years old, watching wrestling on Saturday mornings. And, uh, yep. you know, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that. That's what I started watching again when I started watching wrestling again. After so they weeks. have that on the network? Yeah. Now? Yeah. Only only some in 1992, it looks like, right now. But it's cool. It's like it's a really cool time. Uh, Papa Shango and the Ultimate yeah, Warrior. Yeah, I remember Beauty. that. Yeah, yeah that, that exact storyline is happening right now on, on what I'm watching. And uh, Let's not spoil it for them. No, yeah. I know what happens. I remember, like back back in the day, like in in that era. Yeah, like, I was like, man, I was like deathly afraid of Papa Shango. Jeez. Are you are you yeah. to the point where he hypnotizes the Ultimate Warrior? Oh, and then he, <laughs> yeah. He, the, the last episode I saw, he put the curse on him. He, or he put a curse on him when after a match, and then he ended up getting the stomach ache, and right. then they showed the backstage footage with him throwing Aww. up and all that. Yeah, but I remember how just how freaky that was as a kid. Like this is just. Is unsettling. It was disturbing, you know, as a ten year old kid watching this on TV. You know, like oh. how's it played to an adult though? Because there's a lot of stuff I go, and I talk about this a lot. But the Black Scorpion angle in WCW, I, Chris, I don't know if you've ever heard of it or saw it, but it's looked upon as one of the worst angles in wrestling. But it's one of my favorites because that's what I grew up watching. He talks about it all the time, all the time. <laughs> it's the only one I can really remember yeah. head, head injuries, but in it doesn't age well but i still love it and there are things that you go back and watch on the network like tonight we were watching starcade 90 and it was a skyscrapers match and we laughed so hard when it took sid and uh dan spivey two people to power bomb someone no. and <laughs> right it was great but, yeah. it was awesome. awesome but if you were to talk to somebody that loved wcw you'd go oh God, i remember that match you yeah. know star k was great that was a quick squash match they wouldn't remember that but they go back and watch it now they go oh this was awful yeah does does it age well for you as as a fan uh yeah it does but I think I have a different perspective because, you know, like I said, it's like a nostalgic feeling. You go back and it gives you good memories of childhood. You know what I mean? I'm, probably for someone watching modern day who would never saw any of that stuff and, you know, only knows modern day pro wrestling, they might think it's just really hokey and weird. But, oh, I, I loved it. I, oh, probably like when we, like, we grew up watching it in the, whatever, 80s and 90s. If we went back, like, and watched the 60s and 70s at that time, we'd be like, oh, this is so hokey, right? So yeah. any like further generation is like whatever the previous generation was. Oh man, that that was that was horrible. Yeah. You know, and who knows what's gonna happen? Like, 
10 years from now when we're not even able to wrestle anymore, Mm -hmm. we're going to be like, man, this is like, just like, I I don't know if we're turning into like acrobatic gymnast, like type wrestling. I I don't even know what it's going to look like. Maybe Mm -hmm. we're all going to be robots. Who knows? Here's another chat room question. Chris, could you see yourself as an on-screen character instead of wrestling? Maybe like a GM or anything? I mean, sure. I can see myself as that. Doesn't mean that's ever going to (laughs) happen. You know, I can see myself as I can see myself as a a rodeo clown too. (laughs) Really? I can see. I have a great a lot of hobbies. Yeah, I can see myself as 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 anything. You know, is it something you want to do? You know, uh, let's say you can't go. You've got the knee injury. Ring of Honor calls you and says, "You know, we want you to be a manager." Hey, we need an on-screen, you know, office guy. Would that be something you want to do? Do you think that's a role you could work during your yes. injury? Maybe definitely. I think so. I mean i I would love to work within the wrestling business, even if is not as as a wrestler. I would love to work in the wrestling business somehow, no matter what it is. And I just hope that one day I can retire off of wrestling, no matter what it is, no matter what role I'm playing. I just want to work in wrestling until I retire. You so. can always live with me too. <laughs> Thank you. I would kick my. I'm a wife great up. butler. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. What he already lives with me as a butler. Oh, so, yeah. like for for example, I've already mentioned on this podcast already that I haven't wrestled since like October. October. Yeah. Um, and I've been obviously doing, it's no secret that I've been doing a lot of agenting and stuff like that with impact. Do you ever see yourself like doing like maybe a lot of behind the scenes stuff? Like maybe when you're done with your wrestling career? Yes, definitely. Definitely. Um, I just, I love wrestling. I love being around it. I love working in it. I would just, you know, anything I, I, I would love to learn every aspect of the business and, and work somehow in wrestling somehow. No, I'll tell you somehow in wrestling somehow, somehow, um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't know if you've ever been agenting for Ring of Honor or anything like that, but just being an agent for, for Impact, it's different, you know? Like, I, I know how much you, I hate it, so I'm assuming you hate it too. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, what I'm going to say is I hate the fact that I'm like, man, I got to take these promo pictures and get all my gear on and stuff like that and get pumped up, and then I don't have to wrestle for like five hours. And my knees are going to be swelling because I'm wearing these freaking knee pads mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's yeah, nice yeah. when you just show up like this. And you're like, you got your papers in hand and you do your agent and you leave like that and you don't have to take any bumps. It's nice, yeah. man. You can eat the good stuff at catering. Yes. You don't have to pass on the cookies. Like, yes. yeah, I'm going to have six cookies. Well, after, you know. not if you're backstage with Impact. There's not much good stuff sometimes at catering. Well, I, uh, <laughs> let's not get into that. I wouldn't know. But back in the day, they had these delicious cookies they that did. I always had to pass on. I remember the cookie. Oh, we made man. Red steal a bunch of cookies one time from catering. <laughs> Wait, why couldn't you guys just have stole them? Why um, make that him... was his initiation into yeah. our crew. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, 78 Delta mm-hmm. was our crew. Yeah. <laughs> time, You've talked about time, it. The, time, jacket, time. the jackets and yep. stuff. Frank Guzarian, if you're listening, time. He's not. <laughs> time. I can guarantee that. <laughs> we had a group back then. But anyways. So let's talk about some of the landscape of wrestling, you know, and I, I'm not going to go the route like, I, and I know being PD's friend, I, I, I've i learned that you never go, hey, do you want to go to WWE? Hey, do you want to go do this? But now you have these other companies popping up, you know, All Elite Wrestling, changing the landscape. And the one thing I've talked to PD and we've, we really, you know, talk glowingly about ring of honor is this is a company that gets picked over year after year after year but yet they keep surviving they keep creating their own new superstars who keep going away and they're this machine that just keeps pumping out people and i can't figure out it pd doesn't you know he he stays a little hush even if he knows but what's what's the secret of it for for ring of honor to be able to continue do you look at some companies, they get picked over the way Ring of Honor has every single year. They fold, but yet Ring of Honor thrives. Well, I think the secret there is that they have a large multimedia conglomerate, Sinclair Broadcasting, backing them up. Uh, so, you know, when you have a large corporation like that, you know, they, they own more local channels than any other company in the United States. So when you have a large corporation like that, you know, backing you up, I think that, that helps you stay in business. You mm-hmm. talking about like monetary wise it helps you stay in business? Yes. So, but how does Ring of Honor? It seems like they're always finding the new talent that always gets, like Dennis said, picked over by whatever other company, whether it be WWE, AEW, whatever company they end up going to. Like, how, like does Ring of Honor have like a certain system that's like? It just seems like they're really able to produce talent 
and then better than most them, companies. Yeah, even the, Impact. We even say it that I yeah. think that's Impact's Achilles' would, heel is yeah. they don't develop their own talent. And, and you remember from back in the day, um, and I, I I don't know if you agree with me on this, but what I always said when we were in Impact back in the day, they'd bring in ex WWE guys. And then what would happen? The ex WWE guys would beat us, contract the talent that helped build the company. When I think it should have been, you know, the other way around, kind of like, hey, hey, let's have competitive matches and maybe our guys go over. I think Ring of Honor is different. Maybe that's why, you know, they, they flourish yeah. in times like this. Um, but like, do you feel like Ring of Honor, uh, like maybe their their model of like how they book or something is different? And that's why they're always doing everything so well. Yeah, I mean, they give guys a chance. You know, if you, if you get over, they'll push you in Ring of Honor. Uh, you know, they, they they pay attention to what the crowd wants to see and what they want, or you know, what sells. You know, they they uh, you know look at some of the guys they recently brought in, like uh, Bandito and Mark Haskins yep. and PCO. These are guys that you know they weren't wrestling anywhere before they were wrestling in Ring of Honor. They just kind of made a little name for themselves on the independent scene, and uh, they noticed that buzz and they brought them in. So I, I you know I think that has a lot to do with it. Okay, a question from. Uh... Gwynnicide, worst stable name, Lifeblood or Prince Justice League? <laughs> I know what what is that? Prince Justice League? That, that was like, a, that was a uh, TNA with that Abyss. That was a TNA thing. Yeah, it was. Uh, remember all the like superheroes? I think it was like Abyss and uh, Eric Young and Shark Boy, right, or something like that. Yeah. Oh, I remember. Prince, and what's Prince. what's Lifeblood? That, that's a new crew in Ring of Honor with uh, – there's so many guys in it. I don't, I'm, it's like oh, is that the, Mark the newest and one? Mark Robinson oh, okay. and yeah, yeah, a bunch, a bunch of Are guys they asking what the worst name is? Yeah, which one? I would say Prince attitude. Justice League. Yeah. It sounds horrible. By far, Prince <laughs> Justice League. Yeah, way worse. Uh, side question off that. What was the worst stable proposed to you to be in? Did anybody propose like, hey, we uh, want – Chris, I got this great stable for you to be in. I think – Frontline. Front I was, was just going to say yeah. frontline. Yeah. But that actually ended up happening. It happened for, it was very short lived. Yeah. But I barely even remember it. It was just, who, it was, it was the TNA guys against, who were even? Main Event Mafia. Oh, against the Main that Event Mafia. That was like right when I, yeah. like, they, they wrote me off and then wrote me back on because Steiner was in that. You, you, you remember that? Like, yeah. it, it was just, it was, it was pretty bad because they just kind of, did the you know old school WCW thing where they were like, hey, you guys are in main event mafia, you guys are in front line. It doesn't matter what you guys had going on before that. It just you guys are gonna feud with each other now. And I'm like, oh. tell you what, a, a funny stable since we're on stables or whatever. I think the uh, the the whole search and destroy stable that we had in Ring of Honor was a pretty funny one because uh, every time we we had someone in it, they would leave. So you know, it was it was originally like. Um, me, Alex Shelley, Kushida, and Matt Seidel. And then, you know, Kushida couldn't make it all the time, you know. So he, they just kind of like, all right, we're not going to have Kushida in it because, you know, you know, he wrestles for New Japan full time. He can't be on every Ring of Honor show. And then Matt Seidel ended up going and doing something else. Uh, and then they put, I think it was ACH was in it next. And then ACH ended up leaving Ring of Honor. So after that, it was. Uh, me, Alex, and Donovan Dijak, I believe. Oh, uh, yeah. So D- Dijak was in it for a little bit. Then Dijak ended up leaving Ring of Honor. So then they ended up putting Jay White in it. So it was like me and Alex Shelley and Jay White. And then they had Leo Rush. And then Leo Rush ended up leaving. And then it was just us three. And then Jay White ended up leaving. <laughs> and then, so it was just, just this wow. like rotating door of Search guys and that destroy? were in it. Yeah. Then eventually, finally, I actually think Leo Rush left. And then it was... Just me, Alex, and Jay, and then they added uh, Jonathan Gresham, and then it was us four, and then it just kind of like disappeared and never was talked about again. Yeah, you never probably so, got uh, the chance at all, yeah. I would assume. Is there a wrestler in another organization that you were chomping at the bit to wrestle? Uh, is that for me? Yeah. Well, no <clears throat> one cares about PD, you know. I, I don't want to spoil <laughs> anything for you guys. Care, man. Yeah, he's my boss. Don't don't say. You know, yeah. don't, don't I don't want to spoil that. anything, but I ain't wrestling anybody unless there's a controller involved in a couch. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Brock Lesnar, because you know, I just want to get paid. However much guys <laughs> get paid to wrestle Brock Lesnar, <laughs> right? I just want that payday. Really, yeah. That's 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 it. So. Is there is there a wrestler on the circuit? And this is for me. That uh, reminds you of them when you see them go. That may not be maybe an up and comer. Probably a bad question. Wait a minute, that reminds me of Brock Lesnar. No, you, you. Oh, that reminds like, me of me. Yeah, you oh, sit back and go, uh, "Oh, this young Bucky reminds me of myself." Yeah, you know Trevor Lee actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just his. Uh, I don't know his whole style, and uh, um, you know, I did mocap with him, and uh, 
yeah, I don't know. We just got along really well. And I, I just he, yeah, he kind of reminds me of me, just his style in the ring. And you know, who my back in the day in the PWG days when we used to work there, I remember Davy Richards reminded oh, yeah. me of, of of a Chris Sabin, and I'm like, hey, we already got one Chris Sabin, you know. Um, is it Davy a uh, paramedic in St. Louis now or something? Yeah, uh, I don't know if it's St. Louis, but I know he's a, a paramedic. That's why he's not. I don't know. That guy's impressive. weird. He just tweeted like me one day out of nowhere, saying he didn't like me. He, he like tagged what? me and I have no idea where this came from or why it happened, but he tweeted and he tagged me and Johnny Gargano on the tweet and he says something like, "Yeah, I don't like those guys." And I was like, "Okay, guy, no you idea do? why you would say that or why, why you don't like me." Like, I don't know. That's if a really PD, weird. You get this a lot, but do you get a lot of wrestlers that are maybe up and coming or trying to make a name for themselves on Twitter that try to start a Twitter beef with you to either bring themselves up? Or get, yeah, or get themselves noticed. Do you guys do you guys see that a lot now with social media? No, no, I don't think I mean, so. I mean, other than Davey. Well, that was weird. Yeah, that was a couple years ago, and it was just out of nowhere for no reason. That yeah, I have no idea why that happened. That was very strange. Yeah, but no, not really. Um, I mean, I would like to see. I, I always thought Davey was a was a good wrestler. Oh yeah, great um, wrestler, man. When he and, shows up, yeah, <laughs> when he shows up. Uh, but you know, obviously he's retired now um so but he's gonna come back i know he'll come back everybody always comes back yeah well yeah. um other questions well we we've got tons of questions unless we want to go on a topic or something like seattle that. it's not st louis but he lives in seattle okay uh thank you uh <clears throat> went aside for for correcting me here let me go uh let's see here we got a lot of questions here to go through um let's see Chris, have you ever thought about having a different tag team partner? Um, other than who? Alex Shelley, Kushida. Yeah, man. I mean, because you know, I was just in the uh, Super Junior tournament for uh, New Japan. Yeah, this past November, and Kushida was my tag team partner. Um, yeah, of course, Petey Williams. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. How would that work? <laughs> the Boston Butler connection. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Boston Butler connection. I like it. The B and B. Oh my! He comes out with a the with BBC. a tray and drinks on the tray. Hey, we'll call ourselves Airbnb and we we'll do a bunch of high flying moves. Oh. Airbnb. There we go. Yeah, PD's not much of a high flyer. I don't know if you've seen him wrestle. What are you talking about? <laughs> what? Give me one high flying move you do. He's giving me like a German suplex off the top, right? Did a backflip and stuff. Sure, like that. he yeah, does what? that Rana to the outside. You know? Yeah, you know? man. Yeah. Well, first of all, you've named two moves. <laughs> man, do you need more than two nowadays? I, I, yeah. I kind of think you do. Dude, I'm not like, Can you no. do a standing flip? Yeah, sure. Do I got to land it perfectly? <laughs> For TV? So here's the thing, and I mentioned this before. You know, if I could do things 70% good, I'm not going to do them because, like, guys like, I don't know, Ricochet could do them 100% good. Right. So I'm not going to make myself look bad. That's all. So you're saying you have 33 and one-third chance Sense of doing of, it yeah, good? Yeah, yeah, probably one. <laughs> probably... <laughs> You're trying to get me started, aren't you? <laughs> you yeah. see what I did there? Yeah, I should, I'm uh, sure you've told every Steiner story possible. Um, you know, like, we don't I, even talk about him on the show. Like last week was like the first time we actually in two years kind of talked about him. I pulled out my Steiner impression. Um, we never do it. We never talk about it because it's just done everywhere. Yeah, because yeah. every other thanks Cole Cabana for taking all my Petey Williams stuff. Yeah, but that was like <laughs> over ten years ago too. Um, but yeah, no, I mean if we're on Steiner. Yeah, he's been back in Impact, and he's like in his fifties now. Um, it's, it's it's I love seeing him back there. Do you remember when Scotty was there? What in TNA? In, in, yeah. Oh yeah. In the of day. course. Yeah, it was great. And and seeing all this stuff. But anyways, I digress. We can go right. back to questions. Uh, let's see here. You guys talk about the locker room, or you talked about? Uh, you guys, sorry, I gotta look through the thing to read this. Yeah, no problem. Uh, you guys talk about how TNA did a terrible job of putting over contracted uh, wrestlers. Mm -hmm. How was the locker room between contracted wrestlers and the old WCW alum? Well, there it wasn't a shared locker room. Everyone was separated. I, I remember I think there was three total locker rooms. There was... One trailer of uh, all the X Division guys. Then, like, the, I guess the trailer they, they got yeah off yeah off they were trailers too. They were trailers. Yeah, they, were trailers. <laughs> they were like yeah they were trailers. They put us out by McDonald's. We got busted. <laughs> yeah yeah. So we we were all separated. You know, the X Division guys had our own locker room, and 
I mean, the exhibition guys were also shared the locker room with all the guys they would bring in on the non contract wrestlers. And I yep. think there was the one next to it, you know, I had like uh, mid to upper card, mid to upper card guys. And then, you know, inside the actual office building, part, yeah, yeah, there was like an actual building and a shower and all that nice stuff. That's where the uh, the top level guys stayed. So we never really like uh, mingled with them at all during the day, you know, they were separated. And, PD, odds, what are the odds of a Team Canada appearing on Impact? Mm. The odds. Uh, but could you, you, it's not even been talked about, has it? No, I mean, I would like to see it. I think that's no surprise that I've talked about that. Like, I, I'd like to see, like, kind Would of, they leave you out of it, like, you know, all the X Division matches now? Yeah, sure. No, and, you know, <laughs> you know, and the thing is, like... Um, see, I bust them on yeah. the spot. I don't let <laughs> no, them get away uh, with stuff. It, it's okay. If I wrestle, I wrestle. If I don't, I don't. You know, I'm always ready to go if they need me to wrestle if somebody gets injured. That's been my gimmick for, like, the past year and a half. Like, that, that's, that's the time I've been on Impact is when somebody else gets injured... PD Williams takes his place, um, but I'd I'd obviously like to see it happen. Like I mean, that's when I first started in two thousand four. Like that was my pride and joy. Here's a Canada. good question for you, Chris. Could you see a Motor City Machine Guns tag team without Alex? Mm. Uh, no, because then it wouldn't be the Motor City Machine Guns. Yeah. The Motor the Motor City Machine Guns are Chris Saban and Alex Shelley. Uh, they're otherwise it's not the Motor City Machine Guns. So. Did you did you team with Kushida? Yes. What was what did you guys call yourself? We actually didn't even have a tag team name. Um, I, I thought we should have called ourselves Time Machine because you know the time oh, mixture yeah, of the Time yeah, Splitters, so Motor City it, Machine Guns. But time Splitters were Alex Shelley and Kushida. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I don't think that translated well uh, to the Japanese audience because Kushida, like <laughs> some people liked it. You know, people thought it was a great idea, but uh, uh, like I don't know, I, I don't think Kushida really understood it. I don't know. The time, time machine as in maybe it's a language barrier thing? Yeah, something yeah, like okay. that. Right. I, yeah, maybe it just didn't, you know, wouldn't have translated well to So the do Japanese they not know audience. Back to the Future? <laughs> they no, must know they, Back to the Future. Do. He dresses they, like Marty McFly. Yeah, and, you know, and I think him and uh, Alex Shelley came out in a DeLorean for their Wrestle Kingdom entrance one time. Oh, so, yeah, my. But, that'd be sweet. Oh, yeah. Just even sit in the DeLorean. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm marking out for I've that. I've only seen yeah. one DeLorean, and it was like at Universal Studios. So, I mean, right. just to have another one. I didn't even know there was one in Japan. That's you know, great. Yeah. You brought up something interesting when we we're talking about Japan, but what is what is Japan audiences' vision or views on American wrestling and wrestlers? You, you know, I always find this interesting. Like, uh, I got a buddy who's English, right, and they think like we're the trailer park trash of the wrestling world. Wrestling fans here. What do the Japanese? view wrestling fans in america as i you know i don't know i honestly couldn't tell you um i i like i said there's the language barrier so i don't really interact with a lot of japanese wrestling fans i i don't know maybe you can check out some japanese uh, wrestling message boards if those exist i can't read them you know <laughs> hit the, do the google translate right so it translates to english. or english i, I have can't no read. idea yeah, yeah. I, I have no idea what they think yeah. siri what does no no, nope, I... oh, don't, don't, don't go. My phone almost went over to Siri. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke that backfired, huh? <laughs> you said Siri. Oh, I better not say Siri because they'll think that they want to <laughs> say something. Uh, oh, let's see here. Someone, someone threw out the name. You should have called yourself Time Shifters. Time Shifters? Okay. Did you think of that one before? What? Time, time shifters? shifters? I thought that was one that came up before. No, no. no? That's a good one. All right. Good comment, that person, whoever their <laughs> yeah. tag is. Right. Let's see here. I'm, I'm trying to get some of the past ones that uh, we just kind of skipped over. Yeah, because, you know, that's how I run my show, right? Yeah. Like a dictator. <laughs> you know, because PD doesn't you know, employ me right now. I'm probably two paychecks away from working as his, like, laundry guy or well, his, let, let's, okay, his okay, boss. Let, let's, yeah. let's talk about paychecks because we're still trying to do this live feed to do what uh, to, to see if we could get on impact on their twitch show yeah by the way guys you know and, and we brought in a special guest just for this just to show like hey maybe we can do, do this. you see this the more we're coming for you is that, is that <laughs> i guess i'm cutting a promo on i'm the doing one. you an egg <laughs> i'm not being you pairs <laughs> uh, remember that oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. come on scotty <laughs> hire us <laughs> No, but uh, you know what? Last week we did this and we said, hey, you know, we are kind of free agents, right? You and I? Uh, well, yeah. I uh, in the podcast I mean, you know, and video I, world. Yeah, sure. Impact has a Twitch channel. Yep. 
it, which I think they're just handing out shows to anybody, almost anybody, yeah, except for Petey Williams. Yeah. How does Petey Williams not get a show on Impact, guys? I mean, at this point, now that, like, what, Abyss is gone, like... There's nobody I, else. I, I, yeah, I gotta be, They're like... They're gonna hand them out of... the fans before they give it to Petey. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be, like, one of... Like, I mean, I started in 2000... Four there? I, I, I mean, yeah. I, I gotta be some sort of, like, longevity. Like, I mean, the Hall of Fame something. I mean, I'm not even asking for that. Like, Twitch show. I mean, let, let's let's do this Twitch show. Demore's gonna come out to the fans. You get a Twitch show. You, you get, get a, a Twitch, Twitch show. show. You get a not Twitch you, show. PD. Not you, PD. Not you. No. Right, yeah. no you so we've thrown out to the fans. If you're watching, tag Scott Demore. Tag Impact. Heck, tag Chris Saban just for fun. But don't tell him you hate him. <laughs> That's a no no. And tell them you want to see PD Williams and Dennis Farrell do a Twitch show for them. Yeah, I mean that's that's all we're. I mean we're not even really asking for it because. With our uh, current, you know, fan base and the people that listen to us and stuff like that, we'd be totally fine with a Twitch show. It just we want to, we want to do a Twitch show for Impact, and we just want to get more like involved. The product, yeah. Do you still watch Impact? I mean, I know you're busy and I watch on... everything. Yeah. I watch everything. Yeah. What do you yeah. think of the current product right now for Impact? <sighs> and I well, and I mean this because it's an ever evolving product. When they made the the jump from was it Global Force back to Impact. Yeah, yeah. They really had a Southern wrestling feel where they were, and they've shied away from this. I'm a little mm. disappointed where they bring cameras to indie shows and 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 tape their their wrestlers at an indie show and kind of air like oh over in you know Georgia Montana yeah, whatever, wrestling yeah. we caught up with Eli Drake and. They they kind of gotten away they from did, that, and yeah. I really kind of like that part of 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 what they were doing. So I don't know if you caught it during that because you were probably wrestling and busy at that time. But from where they were, as as bad as TNA was towards the end, as weird as Global Force was, and to now where they've kind of restructured and resurrected themselves in the world of professional wrestling is a good product. How have you, as a past employee, viewed this progression? Yeah, I think they're definitely on the right path. You know, I, I think they've turned things around a lot compared to what it was. Uh, like I said, towards the end of the TNA days, I guess you can technically mm. call it the TNA days, into the Impact Wrestling days. Uh, yeah, it was pretty bad for a while there. And, uh, you know, you can tell things are, are getting on the right track. And, um, I don't know, it's pretty exciting, you know. I don't, I don't know. I like watching uh, LAX and uh, Lucha Brothers a lot. I think those yes. guys are great. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eli Drake is a great, great He's talker, awesome. man. I enjoy yeah. I just enjoy listening to that we, guy talk. We feel, and, we always talk about him. He's like, he's just got this cool factor to him. Yeah. That we feel like he's, right. he's great. I, I've thrown this analogy out to about everybody, and no one gets it. Maybe you will. And if you do, I will give you a beer. I will bring you a beer. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. Did Sounds you ever good. see the movie Broken Arrow? Uh, with John Travolta? Yes. Uh, I think I saw ago. it a long time ago, but All right. I don't know if I could piece together what it was about. It, you know, it was Barely. John and then uh, Christian, not Bale, but... Uh, I have no idea. Anyways, uh, the, the point is, every time John Travolta came on screen, he had this cool music that played behind him. Uh-huh. And Eli Drake is that cool, where I feel like... Every time you see Eli Drake in a promo walking through, he should have his own like music behind him because when he walks into a room, he is just the coolest guy ever <laughs> automatically. I, I mean, that's how I Christian feel. Slater. Thank Christian you, Slater. Jeremy. Okay, okay, whoever that was. Um, no, I, I, I think Eli. I'm a big fan of Eli. We are. I've told him that, and you know he's gonna. Uh, one he day. will be on our pod. I, I I think we we could have probably had him like this week or whatever. But I I think I want to save him. I think I want to do something like when we're in Windsor, maybe you know how would you bring the equipment over there and stuff like that, and we do it live and we could actually see him face to face. I want to do it there. So can we, we get really... your Butler like to pack up all my podcast equipment and haul it over and haul it back? Because no, I'm tired. my Butler works for me. My I, Butler works. He's for not me. international. Yeah. So <laughs> he just he only like his only outside task is uh, doing podcasts with me. So. Okay. All right. Um, but anyways, yeah. So I, I, I wanna, I want it to be special with Eli, just because you know we, we feel like he's 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 a he's a draw. He's a main eventer. Yeah, and I, I, that, I, that's what I feel. I mean, I don't know if you feel and, and the same, the way, Saban. I, Chris, I geeked out when he said that you were coming because, like I said, and I might have told you this before we recorded. I'm a big fan of yours, and and I thank you. 
man, I've even sent you tweets, not telling you I hate you or anything. Call back, by the way. <laughs> but I'm just like, you are one of the coolest, nicest, down to earth people. And I always say, Pete, if you're coming over, why don't you see if you know Saban wants to go? I don't know. Saban's kind of busy, or I don't want to bug him. And then the funny thing is, I'm not busy at all <laughs> right now. Right, right, right now. now yeah. But usually, when I, when I go over to his house, it's on the weekends. When do professional wrestlers work? The weekends. Okay. Well, I, I heard that rumor, by the way. Yeah. So okay. thank you for telling no me that. But finally, he goes, Yeah, I reached out to Saban. I'm not sure if he'll come, but I, I threw out the invite. And then he's like, He's coming. I'm like, Oh. Oh my gosh! Like a little school girl, I'm getting down here. I'm like, all right, now I gotta make my base. I got a vacuum and stuff. <laughs> well, I, walk- I only think you weren't sure is because you texted me at 11:30 a.m. and I was still sleeping. So- I was wondering why it took you so long to respond. Yeah, I've yeah, been up I- for like four hours already. <laughs> I'm like, geez, what's wrong with this guy? I'm just waking up at like 12:30. Are you a night owl? Yeah, 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 I stay. Up okay, late. especially now that I have no schedule and I have nothing to do, I'm just like, yeah, I'm gonna stay up till four a.m. I know the feeling, games. by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and I used to be a night owl until I had kids, and then it was like, well, I'm a night owl, but then I'm also a early bird. They call it. So it's like just zero sleep, pretty much. Yeah, my kid's like ten, so she takes care of herself. I'm not even in her life, really. Yeah, I, I'm more like you have a kid. Yeah, no, I'm, just... I'm more like a stepdad who's a real dad who you know. When she gets older, she'll be like, yeah, there's a guy in the basement. I think he raises me, but I don't know. He's got a TV. I don't see him much. The guy in the basement. That's yeah. that's, that's how it is. Sometimes his wrestler friends come over. I don't know. Anyways, um, is there any hot topics in wrestling this week? I don't even know. You know, uh, I think The Undertaker did an interview uh, over the week where he talked about wrestling isn't really about moves and stuff. Uh, he also <laughs> talked about how... And I didn't really pay attention to it because, I'll be honest, I'm not an Undertaker guy. Uh, I think he hung on a couple years too far. A couple? Well, here's the thing. I don't know if you're a sports guy, but I kind of equate The Undertaker to, like, a baseball player who, you know, when he was 25, he was a 300 hitter hitting 30 home runs and an MVP. But then he's 40. He's playing with this ninth team barely making it and everybody goes gosh do you remember when this guy was like an mvp and now he's like just and that's the undertaker i know now and i don't want to have to remember the undertaker as the guy that limps to the ring and looks tired and slow and and it really kills it for me because we all loved the undertaker at one point now it's just he's to me he's not special because he's hung around a little too long and it ruined the magic for me yeah, and, and now so was he saying that wrestling's not all about moves, or what, what? What was he saying in particular? Boy, I wish I could pull it up. Uh, you know what? I'm leaving the chat room. Sorry, guys. Oh, I mean, we can Let's take see. some more questions if you want. But I mean, I, I I'm trying to think of like Undertaker's like last really good match was probably what WrestleMania because he pretty much only does WrestleManias right now. It's like probably like right. a Shawn Michaels one, maybe shortly Part one, after probably. that. Probably Shawn Michaels one, I would say maybe two. I know he did the like Triple CM H Punk. one wasn't bad because wasn't it Shawn Michaels Triple H and Shawn even, Michaels I don't, again? I don't remember. Or was it Shawn Michaels Shawn Michaels then Triple H? I couldn't tell you. That. I, okay. I couldn't tell yeah. you either. <laughs> I remember Saban and I. We went to now we talked about this in the podcast. We went to. Um, we were in uh, at PWG in Los Angeles. Yep, I know. And uh, our flight was later, and then you know, obviously with the three hour time difference, uh, WrestleMania was starting early. And I think we hung out with Frank Kazarian. He was going to be a uh, a druid for the Undertaker later on in that show. But we went over to Joey Ryan's house, mm-hmm. and we watched WrestleMania. And it was the WrestleMania where John Cena first won the title against Brad JBL. Yeah, yeah, and that's when Batista first won the title against Triple H. Remember yep. that? And that yeah, the WrestleMania yeah. was—I don't think it was good. And I don't even remember who who Undertaker wrestled that WrestleMania. No, dude. I remember they had a nice food, like a nice food spread. They there. had a nice plethora good, of food, yeah, a delightful. Yeah, that's, oh, now you're gonna because yeah. I'm yeah. I'm hosting a WrestleMania party, which you're invited. By the way, if you're not Thank out you. wrestling or have anything better to do. <laughs> I know PD's coming, but he's under contract, so he has to show up. Uh, if he doesn't, then you know he gets tagged with that. Oh, PD Williams no show Dennis's wrestling yep, party, and then it's all over the internet. And the, yeah, and I don't want to do it to him, but he's kind of obligated. Yeah. 
So maybe I'm going to try to sign him to the same contract I have you signed to. No, he's under contract with me, man. What do you, we've been but, talking about this. But, <laughs> no, no, no. But to come as a, a as person, a not oh, yeah, as a yeah, worker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That, as a that's guest. As a human yeah. being. But, yeah, now, a human being. but now hearing this, i got to step my, my spread up. Because I thought, you know what? I'll do chips and dip and... I'll get a big sub, and now I don't I'm think scared. Going to beat that? Yeah, I don't know. No, yeah. that that was that was really good. There was a lot of people there too. Like, the, like I think it, the only person, only other person I knew there was like Joey Ryan, and there was me and Saban. We we're kind of sitting. I remember they didn't even have enough, they didn't even have enough chairs. We were sitting in like those like lawn chairs inside of the guy's living room, just sitting there. Like, was that Joey Ryan's house that we were at? No, you know what? it wasn't. Okay, I didn't. I was. I don't say, think it was. I, I didn't think it was. It was actually Joey's house. No, I think it was somebody else's house. But Joey maybe invited us there. He was like, "Hey, uh, come over here before I gotcha. drive you to the airport." Was, that was like what year was that? Two thousand six. Uh, whenever, yeah. I mean, I would guess John Cena's first title reign. So it's mm-hmm. got to be some time ago because he's already won the title mm-hmm. sixteen more times. So, huh. um, crazy. Do you still get giddy about WrestleManias? You know, you're not. Wow. I gotta do this. <laughs> Dennis's MacBook Book Pro. Pro. I spelled my name right, by the way. It's a double S. Do you, there. do you still get giddy to watch a WrestleMania, being in the industry so long, working for a different company? Oh, I still think it's cool. You know, obviously, it's not the same feeling as uh, when I was a child. You know, waiting for WrestleMania season. But yeah, of course, it's still cool because it just still has that like kind of special feeling for it, and you know what it means to. Uh, all the people that are working the show and especially a lot of the people that are working the shows nowadays are guys that, you know, guys and gals that I've worked with, you know, in the past. And, and you know, you, you obviously know what it means to them. So it's cool to see like, you know, good people, you know, having great successes in wrestling and being at WrestleMania. And, yeah. What kind of wrestling <clears throat> do you like the best? And, and now this professional. Is... Oh, really? Oh, nice. Oh. Well, nice. listen, I'm not a death match guy. I don't like right. tax and hardcore stuff. I don't, get off on the blood stuff it, it, it this is something i get bashed on the internet for because i'm just not a fan of that stuff and i think it's good and it makes sense in a story i can get behind it but for some guy to dump a bag of tacks in a wrestling match for no reason and get does nothing for me what about you as a fan is there a certain kind of wrestling match that you go hey you know what? I'm going to stop, sit down, and watch this. Or, eh, I could care less for it. Well, I'm I'm willing to give anything a chance. Really, um, like I said, I, I I won't sit down and watch a death match, but I will uh, look up the clips of it. And <laughs> you know, I I like to see like the crazy stuff that happens. But not, I'm not going to sit through like, you know, a lot of death matches just have just terrible, just terrible, terrible stuff. You know, you'll see little things like. Terrible punches and kicks and like ridiculous reversals that are just really bad technique. But then you watch them, you know, take a power bomb off the top rope through like glass and you know oh. onto a barbed wire or whatever. That stuff. Hey, I enjoy watching that. But like the small like you know crappy technique stuff, I just it just you know I can't do that. But you know I'm willing to give anything a chance. I, I like all styles of wrestling really, and I think anything can be good done the right way. And uh, you know you'll be surprised what what what's good and what's not. You know, would you do a death match? No, no, no way, no, no way, absolutely no. not. What's no What's way. the most hardcore you've got in a match, and what did you think in the middle of it? Like, what the heck am I thinking? Yeah, I, I don't even know. I mean, I've done like weapons matches and stuff like that, but uh, I remember you. Uh, we were at uh, not Ted Petty, but uh, Jeff Peterson Cup, uh-huh. and you and Sanja were brawling all through the arena. Oh, I remember yeah. you getting like a pile driver on the floor and stuff. It yeah. was like the finals or whatever. Dude, I mean, that was pretty like hardcore you guys got pretty hardcore yeah in that I, I remember that i remember i looked because i wanted to see that match against me and sanjay because it was the final that was the finals of the of the entire tournament and uh, i remember searching on the internet trying to find this uh it's probably Peterson Cup DVD. no I, I ended up oh yeah yeah i found one i think on ebay and this was just a couple of years ago and i bought it and i'm like <laughs> sanjay you got to see this i'm like man <laughs> i remember like, I, that I was match. there at ringside because they made us all go at ringside now yeah. that was like that was good and like the people were into it and all that kind of stuff i know it was fun i mean i I like any type of match that and it doesn't matter what style uh what uh gender anything if it tells a good story and it gets me emotionally involved uh, i'm for it man Mm -hmm. i mean that's that's professional wrestling i think that's we we have the opportunity every single match to say it's you know the bottom of the ninth bases loaded you know two ball like full count pretty much and uh you know you got two outs yeah Nice. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, but you know, you hear this analogy all the time from many different wrestlers. 
we have that opportunity because we write the shows. Um, and for us not to deliver, I mean, it's just, it's sad that we, that if you don't, so any type of match that can deliver that, I mean, I, I'm for, I don't care if it's hardcore, what gender, um, if, if it's small guys, big guys, what era or time frame or whatever, good stories always win no matter what. Absolutely. To wrap this up, I oh, got, God. I was about to say, oh. I, I'll be right back. I have to pee so yeah. bad, oh, but well, if you're wrapping it up, I, I, think I, I am can hold wrapping this minutes. up. Oh my to, God. I to, to wrap pee. this up. I have to ask you, what are your plans now? Because you say 2020 is about the timetable you think you'll return. Do you have any plans to kind of stay in the eye of social media to to kind of stay around wrestling? Or are you going to start coming around shows? Maybe developing a you know on screen character that may not wrestle. Is there any plans for you? You know, just to start kind of trying to stay in the the media eye, I guess I would put it like that. Uh, I, I, I really just have like, I'm only thinking short term right now. I just want to get through this. I want to get my surgery done. want to get through physical therapy and just want to get back into ring shape. Uh, I'm not really thinking too far in the future right now. I just want to f- just focus on that, focus on getting better. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll tweet when I feel like it, you know, I never really, it's weird because, uh, you know, one of my motivating factors in wrestling never was to be famous. I never really cared about being famous. You did a good job, by the way. What, of not be, being famous? Be, be, I know. Yeah. yeah, I did a good job of not being famous. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so so it's like I never really cared. Like if, if I don't tweet for weeks at a time and I don't get that attention, it doesn't matter to me because, I don't know, you know, that's just not something I think that matters in life. Um, and I think that that probably hurts me as a pro wrestler, but at the same time, Hey man, that's just how I am. So I'm just focused. I just want to focus on getting the surgery, getting better. And then, you know, we'll see what opportunities are available. Can you tell us when the surgery is April 24th? Okay. Yeah. That's not too far away, about six weeks or so. And we all know when you tweet, uh, Sanjay loves you by the way. Um, I love him, bro. (laughs) Yep. And so and I saw your uh, – you got like two new T-shirt designs. I saw those. They look great. Where can people find those uh, T-shirts? Oh, yeah, prowrestlingtees.com slash Chris Sabin. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, check it out. They have me under the injured wrestlers section. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Injured wrestlers. Yeah. There's, there's active wrestlers and injured wrestlers. Yeah, hey, so if you guys want to help out some injured wrestlers, you know, like, you know, I'm not working right now, so <laughs> I would appreciate it. But, well, you know, if you don't want to buy a shirt, that's cool too. I respect that, you know, do whatever you want to do with your shirt, money. But buy the shirt because they're a great. Yeah. Design. But it would it would help me out, you know, at this time. Is PD giving yeah. you time off for the surgery, or do you have to go back to work, or how's that There's work? There's crutches, with man. There's no time off. Yeah, PD's PD's actually um, doing the surgery. So wow, you know, he's actually an orthopedic surgeon on yep. the side. That I don't yeah. know if you knew that, but yeah, yeah he does. You notice uh, how we always talk how I'm so busy. Yeah. We never mention why I'm so busy. Orthopedic. It's surgeon. weird because you spend a lot of time looking at my wife's foot. I didn't know what was up with that. Yeah, because she broke her fibula. Yeah. yeah. Which you don't actually need crutches for that. You just wear the boot. That's, and it's the boot. Right. So, yep. See? All right, Chris, we're going to let you go pee, PD. We'll, uh, we'll I'm going to pee after up. him. Yeah. So, and then you go pee after that. So, good. 